All right, so after a lot of speculation for several months on end, we finally have confirmation that Joe Biden is picking Kamala Harris for vice president. <laughs> uh, it seems so perfect. It's so biblical, honestly, that in a country of 300 plus million people, not only is uh, two senile rapists and Kanye West the best we can do in terms of uh, picking a president, but uh, the vice presidential picks are no better either. <laughs> so, uh, fucking a match made in injustice, as if it already, as if it's already hasn't been said enough. Let's just dive right in and explain why this is criminally laughable on just uh, seismic levels. If I'm even using that word correctly. Okay, so Joe Biden obviously was the architect of the 1994 crime bill which exploded the prison population gave more money to prisons to you know build more prisons and incarcerate people and disproportionately targeted minorities stuff like that and of course he was always against legalizing marijuana he still hasn't come out in favor of it yet on the campaign trail uh he touted working with segregation as he proudly did so he opposed desegregating the school buses he's even used dated racial slurs like roaches on the campaign trail in this election cycle now, to be fair, he was saying, I, and I'm not making this up, I'm not paraphrasing, I am quoting him directly, quote, I learned about roaches, I learned about kids jumping on my lap, end quote, because, you know, uh, he has dementia and he doesn't know where the fuck he is, and he needs to have his car keys taken away, but they want to give him the keys to the White House. <sighs> anyway, so... Obviously, he has a history of racist policies and racist sentiments. So it's perfectly fitting that he picks a woman who, when she was district attorney, she protected pedophile priests. Of course, as Tulsi Gabbard elucidated very notably during one of the debates in, in this election cycle, Kamala Harris locked up at least 1,500 people for marijuana and then laughed about the idea of smoking marijuana. She withheld evidence that would have freed an innocent man from being released. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. There's a word for that. It's called slavery. A black woman did slavery in modern times. It sounds so euphemistic and hyperbolic, but that's literally what happened. Uh... She fought to keep the cash bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst way. She wanted to prosecute poor people for their true, truant kids not going to school. And she she's on video laughing about it, recognizing how controversial it is. No, not, not just how you – know, that, that's a shorthand. It's unpopular because it's a horrendous idea. But she's chumming it up and laughing about how controversial it is. As, like, like, like how tone deaf do you have to be? Uh, she said Trump was the greatest threat to national security, but she voted yes to approve his uh, his military budget, give, uh, increase it by $130 million in perpetuity. And, and Democrats voted to reauthorize the Patriot and give him expanded spying powers. They said he was a Putin puppet and a Manchurian candidate and a threat to national security, but they made him the most powerful human being that's ever lived on the face of the earth. <sighs> Yikes. So, again... And, and I think I linked this in uh, the video I did about Kamala Harris dropping out of the race. I think I linked in the description uh, her protecting pedophile priests as district attorney. I will link it again in the in the description for this video for y'all to check out. And whatever else I may find, uh, I was going to link the, the thing with Tulsi introducing her to the underside of a bus because that's precious and needs to be protected. <laughs> needs to be that that... that that footage needs to be in a shrine or a museum somewhere because that's how politics is supposed to go. And of course, I have no doubt that people will call you a racist or sexist or both if you oppose Kamala Harris being picked for VP. Now, here's the deal. Holding politicians accountable, holding them, holding their feet to the fire for their atrocious record is not racist, it's not sexist, it's not bigoted, it's not hated, hateful, it's not... Uh, it's called using your conscience and having a moral compass. So this is why I'm not voting. If the idea is that Trump is a racist and that Trump is a sex offender and that voting for Trump is uh, 
an insult to the memory of George Floyd or Trayvon Martin or whatever, and it's, uh, you know, you're re re-traumatizing victims of sexual assault, as AOC put it, well then what the hell is voting for Biden? Like, uh, I'm not even going to get into this shit with T Tara Reid, and I forget what senator it was, but this was right at the beginning of 2017 right before Trump took office when Biden was swearing at all the senators for the new term. And B Biden is on video sniffing this little girl's hair right in front of the of her father, the senator, and then asking the senator, can I take a picture with her alone? So if if this is what he does on national television, it was on C-SPAN, I think, if this is what he does in public with cameras watching, God only knows what he does in private. And, uh... I mean, him and Kamala went at it in the debates, and Kamala's like, that woman, who, that little girl on the bus was me. It's like, they, they they were so nominally contentious in the debates, but now they're going to unite and act like uh, they're, they're going to fucking feign moral superiority uh, opposing Trump. <sighs> so, I just want to summate, uh, well, this is what happened. A racist, demented, sex offender, crime bill architect, anti-marijuana lunatic picked a Wall Street beholden, slave-holding cop to run the free world. And don't forget, I, oh, I can't believe I almost forgot about this. When Kamala Harris was attorney general, her, she was strongly encouraged to prosecute Stephen Nugent. He was a Wall Street banker and a Goldman Sachs partner, and he, his bank, One West, was illegally foreclosing on grandmas and grandpas all over the place. They evicted a 90-something-year-old widow for like a 25 or 27-cent mortgage error. They changed the locks on a Minnesota woman without telling her, without her permission. She got locked out of her house in the middle of a blizzard. And, of course, he was a Wall Street banker and a, and a, and a Goldman Sachs partner, so he's an establishment whore and a financial criminal. They told her to prosecute him, she didn't, and so he donated to her campaign, and then she voted for him to be Trump's Treasury Secretary. Moral of the story is, there are no heroes in this. I'd like to believe that Tulsi still is, and Tulsi helped shed some light on the horrible things that Kamala Harris has done. But I guess it needs to be said again, because people are going to treat this as a victory, and people are going to... I mean, they're going to... They're going to... They're gonna, obfuscate and deflect from the policy substance and just focus on the fact that we might have a black woman as vice president. <sighs> and don't give me that lesser to evil shit either. The lesser evil just paves the way for the greater evil. And it's it's honestly, at this point, who is the greater evil, Trump or Biden? <laughs> I, I'm curious to know. If they both oppose Medicare for all, they both oppose defunding the police, and they, <sighs> they're both beholden to Wall Street, well then, how are they different? So, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, that's all I got for you. For you guys watching, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed, smack the like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell to get notified next time I upload. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Stay safe. Take care. And I'll see you again soon.